odds are you clicked on this video or are listening to this podcast because you are looking for any and all ways to find osteoarthritis pain relief. And as a physical therapist, I am here to bring you some of the best resources so you can not only unlock pain relief, but also unlock adventure. In this episode, we're talking all about blood sugar. Now, regardless if you have diabetes or not, blood sugar levels are actually connected to the development and even the progression of osteoarthritis. We are going to talk about the connection between the two, what exactly you need to know, and then what you can do to better control your blood sugar levels, thus helping to control osteoarthritis pain. If we haven't met before, my name's Alyssa. I'm a doctor of physical therapy here to show you how to live out your own arthritis adventure. When we talk about blood sugar and its connection to osteoarthritis, it's important to talk about the number one thing that controls most of our blood sugar, and that's something called insulin. Now, insulin is a hormone released from the pancreas that helps to regulate blood sugar, but insulin also helps to maintain the health of your cartilage the smooth parts in between your joints that help to absorb stress and can be impacted in the case of osteoarthritis not only does insulin help to give your cartilage the nutrition that it needs because it's avascular, meaning it doesn't have its own blood supply so it relies on external things to give it nutrients but it also helps to maintain its integrity and to strengthen the cartilage. Now there's something called insulin resistance, which you may have heard of before. Insulin resistance basically means that your body isn't able to regulate blood sugar as well. Your body isn't as sensitive to insulin. After you eat a normal meal, Insulin is released from your pancreas to go eat up blood sugar because you have sugar floating around your blood and we don't want to have a lot of free sugar in there. So the insulin comes in and it eats it up. There's something called insulin resistance where your body isn't as sensitive to insulin. So your pancreas has to continue and continue to release insulin and it doesn't always absorb the blood sugar very well. So you have higher levels of blood sugar floating around. This can start to wreak havoc on a few different things. One, it can impact the strength and the thickness of your cartilage. It doesn't have all of the cells it usually does to help maintain the integrity of the cartilage. So it can start to break down and it can start to become less efficient. Secondly, it can actually promote inflammatory cells. And inflammatory cells can come into the joint and they can start wreaking havoc on the normal cell processes that keep your joint healthy, can lead to irritation, can lead to pain, and can lead to more cartilage breakdown. The good news is it's actually possible to reverse insulin resistance. Now, insulin resistance is usually brought on by a couple of different factors, largely lifestyle factors, including holding on to excess body fat, poor diet, lack of sleep, high stress levels, lack of movement, all of these things can contribute to your body becoming less sensitive to insulin. So on the contrary, in order to reverse insulin resistance, we have to flip a lot of these lifestyle factors, including reducing excess body fat, checking in with the diet, including more fruits and vegetables, looking at your sleep and really prioritizing that six to eight hours of the quantity, but also looking at the quality of your sleep and finding ways to, of course, reduce stress if you're able to, but also having outlets to help you manage the stress. So it's not continuing to play such a large role on your body. Each of these things also can help to contribute to osteoarthritis pain relief a lot of these lifestyle factors can make a big difference in both your pain severity and the frequency at which you're feeling pain. I want to talk about one of the 
probably most important things when it comes to looking at reversing insulin resistance, but also improving osteoarthritis pain. This certain thing carries a lot of power, has pretty much no side effects, and can make you feel really good. And this one thing is exercise. And when we look at exercise, there's Essentially, we can look at it in two different buckets, just to make it more simple. There's low intensity exercise. This includes walking, this includes doing household chores, running errands, etc. You're moving around, you're perhaps doing some exercise, but you could still hold a conversation with someone and you don't particularly feel too out of breath. There's also higher intensity where it's hard to maintain a conversation, you're feeling out of breath, things feel more challenging. And there are lots of different ways you can fall into both of these categories. But when we're looking at a simplistic view, lower intensity exercise tends to help to reduce blood sugar levels because your muscles are now requiring more energy. And they're pulling that energy from the sugar that's floating in your blood, thus reducing blood sugar levels. But if we look at higher intensity, if you kick up the intensity of exercise, you not only get these immediate benefits while you're doing exercise of reducing blood sugar, you're reducing it a step further because your muscles continue to need more and more energy. But there's also an added longer term effect where you start to make these longer term adaptations. The processes that help your cartilage strength, for example, can become stronger. Those cells can become stronger. Body is much better at controlling those levels. That's incredibly important. So a lot of these lower intensity exercises and lower intensity movements can be helpful in the short term. But if you can kick the intensity up higher, which I know with osteoarthritis, you may be thinking, oh, I have joint pain, everything hurts. How the heck am I supposed to do higher intensity exercise? Well, I'm glad you're here because I have lots of ways to help you do that. Higher intensity exercise is possible, but it doesn't always have to look like the lifting all these weights and running and moving quickly. If we think back to the definition of higher intensity exercise of what we mentioned was the definition that you're feeling breathless, that it's feeling challenging, that it's hard to hold a conversation. So this can look a lot of different ways. This can look like walking a little bit faster or walking in say intervals where you walk fast for a minute, slow down, walk fast for another minute, slow down. Of course, this is going to include some weightlifting. It's going to include some resistance training, some jumping, but also it's just moving quickly standing up and down from a chair quickly. These sorts of things are ways to increase the intensity of your exercise. So exercise can have a profound effect on blood sugar, especially in the case of type two diabetes. You're essentially trying to get your body better at controlling your blood sugar. So when we're looking at the connection between blood sugar levels and osteoarthritis, a lot of it comes through the sensitivity of your insulin and your ability to control blood sugar levels. The less control you have over your blood sugar levels, the more destruction may be happening to the cell processes, the cartilage doesn't have as much help and it doesn't have as many workers to help keep it healthy. So you start to see some breakdown. So this can lead to, again, the development and the progression of osteoarthritis. Once you can reduce your level of insulin resistance, then it can be easier to control your pain. It can be easier to incorporate more higher intensity exercise, and it can be easier to live out your adventure.
I hope that this was helpful for you and I hope this gives you some insight on how you can reverse insulin resistance naturally and how you can also reduce osteoarthritis pain naturally. If you're looking for more information on how to kickstart your journey to finding osteoarthritis pain relief, I'm going to link a video down below of the three things to do to get started on your own arthritis adventure. You can click on that down below. If you're listening on the podcast, go ahead and go to that show description and you'll see the link there. Thanks for listening.